Hey everyone, in this video we're just going to go over some home gym essentials as well as some nice things that you can use to outfit your own home gym. And we're going to talk about what I've set my home gym up with, what I find to be effective, and ways that you can save money to make yourself an effective home gym. In a list of about 10 things, we're going to go down the priority echelon, discuss really where you should spend your money, and the things that are absolutely necessary for your success in a home gym. First up, we've got what I call your base of operations. This is your squat rack and your bench at the bare minimum. Maybe your deadlift platform if you've got the space like me. Otherwise, maybe you're deadlifting inside your rack. you got a tiny little home gym, still a good home gym nonetheless. Squat rack, you guys. This is where you need to spend your money. This one right here, I got lucky, and I was actually looking around on Craigslist and Facebook, and I found this baby for 500 bucks. So, extremely lucky on my part, but I was doing the diligence and putting in the work looking around on these avenues. And this will be the first way that you can save money on outfitting your home gym. Fairly common sense, but please keep in mind, if you have the money to spend on new equipment, doesn't necessarily mean you need to, you know, count Craigslist out on something like this. Look around, you could find a great deal, save money and put it somewhere else and outfit your home gym a little bit better. Let's talk about specific things you should look for in your squat rack and your bench. Some absolute essentials for your squat rack. In my opinion, we got one inch hole spacing. Look how beautiful this is. It's like it was made for bench. This right here is something I would consider spending extra money on. Now, if you can't afford that, a really good alternative to one inch hole spacing is simply raise your squat rack up just a little bit to where that one of these holes down here in this range better fits your bench press. Now what this might do is change where your squat settings are, but in my opinion, it would be better to have a squat setting that's a little bit off versus a bench setting that's a little bit off because the setup and unrack on a bench is so crucial, especially if you're training by yourself like you probably are in a home gym. Something to consider one inch hole spacing. The next thing to consider is going to be extra accessories or options on your squat rack. Now this might come in the form of additional J cups to support the weight or additional safeties like you see here or band pegs. These are all things that came with this squat rack that I found used, but these are actually options you can order on Elite FTS. It can really raise up the price of your squat rack in your home gym. Now, if you can't afford that, there are some really good alternatives. Now, if you want to have two safeties, but you can't afford to buy both safeties, most squat racks are going to come with one. I mean, unless you buy it used, you're going to get at least one safety. The other option is if you're pretty good with toe straps, you go to a hardware store, you can get another type of safety. So in that case, you'd still have two safeties and you can still do really cool things like bottoms up pin presses, you know, static stuff in here, which is really awesome for bench and especially the isometric holds against these safeties, which are so awesome. And I learned about those from like a really old lifter. And that's why I'm stoked on having these two safeties. Two J cups. Definitely a convenience factor. It's really nice to be able to, I don't know, incline bench and then have over here set up something else like maybe a really light bar just for overhead press. That would require two barbells, which we're going to touch on. And what I've got here are some dip stands. Now these things in particular came with this used squat rack. If I was buying it new, I probably wouldn't spend the money on these. These can be better accomplished by other means. They are, however, a really nice convenience factor. I'm not sure how much this would add to your squat rack at home, but these are definitely something that I probably wouldn't put in my budget. I would probably put it towards something else like a really nice barbell. Now, just above me, I've got a pull-up bar. Pull-up bar, critical, critical in your squat rack. I mean, if you don't have a pull-up bar on your squat rack or maybe somewhere else to do pull-ups in your house, like on a doorway or something like that, I mean, if you're not doing pull-ups, you probably aren't even living right. So first, take a look in the mirror and ask yourself, are you doing pull-ups? Next to that, ask if you can do more and why you probably should be and why you're not, and then find a way to get a pull-up bar somewhere in your vicinity to where you're always doing pull-ups. Reason being, two really good write-ups below on pull-ups. So, Little rant on pull-ups aside, you gotta have a pull-up bar in your home gym setup. For me, it's most convenient in the squat rack. Definitely spend your money there. Those two write-ups are below, and they're going to tell you why you should be doing more pull-ups. Now let's talk about some good things and some bad things with the adjustable bench. First thing, the crack. What happens if your crack goes in the crack? You don't wanna have your butt falling this crevasse you're trying to set up for your bench, that sucks. Luckily, 
you can just refine your bench setup around that, but if that's not an option and you got to deal with the crack, I mean, that's a huge bummer. The biggest downside easily when it comes to an adjustable bench. So consider that. If that's going to be a huge annoyance factor, then probably don't roll with an adjustable bench. But I'm going to try to make some really sound arguments on why you should still get over that and get yourself an adjustable bench. The other big downside is these adjustable positions might actually kind of suck for you. So if you got bad shoulders and it puts you straight up and down on that last setting like it did, I mean, that's basically a useless setting. So that's a huge bummer. This aside from that is a really high quality bench. Luckily for me, this top portion is small enough. I can squeeze my little manlet size self on there and bench just fine like a normal bench. But if you're normal size, you're probably going to have to adjust your setup to keep your butt on this pad. That's a huge bummer. But Let's discuss the positive things with the adjustable bench. It opens you up for more opportunities to push overhead. So for me, overhead pressing, standing, that kind of stuff, my shoulder mobilities just will not sustain it for a long period of time. And incline benching does me a world of good. So something to consider there. But let's say, hey, Cody, you can't, me with the incline and the overhead, I just, no. Guess what? Incline bench is still here to save you. Look at this. Now you could do chest supported row. I mean, that's pretty sweet. Rear delt flies. Put this down here, you lay down on this, and get yourself some dumbbells. Whew, getting strong already. Big thing for having an adjustable bench is just opening up more movement varieties. Now, that might not interest you, but for me, variety is absolutely critical. And the more variety you can include in your already limited garage gym, the better. Spending the money on the adjustable bench is going to open up a whole lot of variety that otherwise you would not have access to otherwise. So just spending a little bit more on your garage gym is going to give you a lot more options in the long run. So your deadlift platform, really simple. All it comes down to is getting some rubber pads, probably two sheets of ply, and some carpet padding like what I've got, and you're all basically set up. The most expensive part is going to be these horse stall mats, these rubber mats. I think I got mine for like 20, 30 bucks at Lowe's. Next to that, the carpet padding might get expensive. You could probably save some money by finding some salvage carpet, maybe going on Craigslist, seeing if somebody's giving it away. This particular carpet pad is meant for radiant floor heating. I did find a pretty good deal on it at Lowe's. A link for it will be in the description box below. It is a bit more dense. It does absorb more weight and pressure as well as sound. So something to consider there is maybe spending some extra money on what goes underneath your platform. Mostly, it's just some dense rubber mats, potentially a place for you to stand on that could be rubber. In my case, it's just some hard wood with some carpet that I put on top of it. Two sheets apply. Very simple deadlift platform that gets the job done. You don't need to go too fancy. You could save a lot of money here and put it towards some other nice thing in your own garage gym. So let's talk about some barbells. We've got first up an easy curl bar. You can find this super cheap on Craigslist, online even. Incredibly inexpensive. You could probably pick one of these things up for $25 with collars and maybe even a little bit of weight if you just look online for that kind of money. It opens up all kinds of varieties, curls, triceps options that weren't even available. And it's more comfortable for your wrists and elbows. Why not spend the extra money? Look online, find that use. It's just, why not? Why not? Easy curl bar. It should be in your home gym. Next up, we have this black standard barbell with the red collars. This wouldn't work with my Olympic weights, but I do have plans for this. It came to me free, so why not take a free barbell and maybe, I don't know, turn it into a croc row dumbbell? Sounds like a good plan to me. This one right here with the weird ends, picked it up used, played it in sports, $20, $30. You should have two barbells in your home gym because the convenience factor is huge. Going back to maybe doing bench and then incline or standing shoulder press in your same squat rack, super sedated opens up so many avenues for training, having two barbells is absolutely essential. And guess what? You can go with a cheap one on your secondary barbell because you probably won't be loading those accessory movements all too heavy or doing anything crazy on it. So make sure to have maybe your easy curl bar and a secondary straight barbell. Last but not least, a high quality barbell. This is where you should really put some money, if not first into your squat rack, definitely here into your barbell. This is what's touching your hands. This is what's touching your back. It's supporting the weight that you're lifting and it's absolutely essential to your own safety and the safety of those people who are using your own gym. So if you got a shitty bar, you're running a risk. 
That's all I'm saying. On top of that, a bad bar, one bad dump, and you're assed out of training. This black one right here, recently replaced, has been taking a beating. Just recently, taking 455 from like maybe a foot onto the safeties, basically no bend. So, go with the crappy barbell, that happens, you're assed out of training. Go with the good one, you can continue to train because you invested in a good bar. Next up, other specialty bars. I've got a deadlift bar for me. You might consider a safety squat bar or something. This is just a nice thing to have. So if you're just new setting up in your training, go with an Ohio Power Bar. That's what I just recently bought from Rogue. I absolutely love it. It's a great all-around bar. If you want to get something special and you got the extra money, consider a deadlift bar or maybe a safety squat bar. Wrapping up the video here, let's talk about some things that are at safety and fun to your training. Collars. These $10 spring collars not really worth your money. They're going to wear out over time and they're really not that safe. Your plates are going to slide off. These things, hardcore collar, heavy duty, that's going to be $20, $30, $40. Spend the money on something like that and the safety in your garage gym is going to go way up. Next up, we got some variety options. Bands, these things, while great for accommodating resistance, Better, in my opinion, for isolations and rehab movements. I use this one red band for so many different exercises, I can't even go on to name them. From curls to rehab stuff for my hips, the amount of money spent here, 50 to $75 on bands, has gone a really long way. So something to think about here, even if you don't do accommodating resistance in your main lifts, the accessories you can do here are fantastic. Next up, and in my opinion, if I had to go back and a million times buy this TRX suspension trainer over again, I'd, I'd do it every single time, a million times over. The amount of accessories and options that you can add into your training through this TRX suspension trainer is huge from upper body to lower body. I mean, hell, I can do leg curls with this thing and that's one of the hardest things to do in your home gym. Additionally, this takes care of abdominal training and a whole bunch of other conditioning work as well. You could pack it in a suitcase and travel and stay fit. If this can get a marine fit in the middle of the ocean, I think it'd probably be a good investment in your home gym. Well, I hope you liked the video and the discussion on the different pieces of equipment, the accessories and options, and the rationale why you might include some of this stuff in your home gym. Again, just a reminder, check for used equipment. This rack I found used, extremely lucky, but I still found it. Do the same and you could probably save a lot of money. I hope you liked the video. Please subscribe to the channel. It's getting a little bit cold here. The rain has passed, but still frigid at 10,000 feet. I'm gonna get to training, try to warm up a little bit. Thanks.